Hey everyone, it's Tim from Linus Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today we are talking about fetal development and nutrition. Now there are some videos out there that talk about nutrition for your ewes and does once they become pregnant and as you roll through the pregnancy process, but not a lot of them get into the nuts and bolts about what it is that's actually going on with that baby as it is developing. So by better understanding this, it's going to help you to better understand why it is that we feed the way that that we feed and why it is that we avoid some of the things that we avoid while these sheep and goats are pregnant. Now there are about three different phases that these babies go through from the time of conception until they are born. These three phases are known as the germinal phase. This is from about zero days to 14 days. Then we go into what we know as the embryonic phase and this is from about 14 days to about 50 to 60 days and then from there we go into what's called the fetal phase. So we initially are in that germinal phase and that germinal phase is when the sperm and the egg meet the baby very very first starts to develop and it finds its way into implanting itself into the wall of the uterus of mom and that's when a placenta starts to form. We're going to get into the placenta a little bit farther along in this video and we're going to explain what the placenta is and why it is important. Important. Now, once we rule out of that germinal phase into the embryonic phase, the embryonic phase is really, really important. And that's because this is the part of gestation where the baby is developing all of their vital organs, their spinal cord, their buds that will eventually become their legs, so on and so forth. So you can understand why nutrition would be very, very important during this phase. Finally, we move into the last stage, which is the fetal phase. And the fetal phase is important because this is when a lot of the growth takes place. This is when that baby is going to finish developing. They're going to get ready for birth and they are going to put on lots and lots of weight. This is also when the hair and the wool, things like that develop as well. This comes with some certain concerns that you're going to want to consider when it comes to nutrition because we don't want that baby to get too big inside of mom. We could run into some issues with delivery. We'll get into that in a little bit. So I wanted to recap quickly on flushing. Flushing is kind of before we get started on things. And if you haven't seen our videos on flushing, you can check those out right here. Flushing essentially is giving increased nutrition to sheep and goats prior to breeding to help allow them to become pregnant better. It allows them to ovulate a little bit harder and it also increases our overall chances of having multiple births as well. So flushing is very, very important. And if you haven't checked out that video, go ahead and check it out. Now, once the mom is pregnant, we've entered into that germinal phase and that embryonic phase. What's going to happen is, is the placenta is going to start to develop. Now, what the placenta is, the best way to think about the placenta is you can think of it as the transfer station between mom and the baby. Now, every baby inside of mom is going to have its very own placenta. This is a little different than it is in humans where twins may share a placenta. Inside sheep and goats, every baby is going to have its placenta. Now that placenta of every baby can get so close to one another that it appears that it's kind of one large placenta or one large mass. And that is normal, but just know that every baby has their own. So what is the placenta? We well, need to back up just a little bit. When you think of these babies, you think of that umbilical cord. And a lot of people think of that umbilical cord as a direct tie from the baby to the mom, but that's not necessarily true. What the umbilical cord is, is it's a direct tie from the baby to the placenta. That placenta inside the wall of the uterus expands out into mom's bloodstream and it gets these little finger-like things that go out into mom's bloodstream and those are called villi. You can just think of them as little hairs. The reason that there are those little hairs is because it actually increases surface area. So what does that placenta do? That placenta does numerous things. It transfers transfers nutrition between mom and baby. 
vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids. It breaks down proteins into more absorbable proteins, and it can give those nutrients to the baby to help the baby grow. It also exchanges waste products between the baby, puts it back into mom where mom can get rid of it. It also transfers passive immunity. Now, we talk a lot about passive immunity when it comes to colostrum, but some of that passive immunity, some of those immunoglobulins and and antibodies are actually transferred to the baby through the placenta as well. And then the placenta helps to control things like hormones. It can control things like estrogen and other hormones that help keep the baby healthy, help keep the uterus healthy, and help prepare that baby for delivery. So when we look at the major nutrients that are needed for these babies during development, one of the first ones that comes to mind for me is selenium and vitamin E. Selenium and vitamin E are very important because it has a lot to do with muscle development. It also has a lot to do with mom keeping that placenta healthy and actually helps mom to release that placenta after the baby is born. If you don't have enough selenium and vitamin E during pregnancy, you can end up with muscle problems that you may know of as white muscle disease, and you may also end up with issues with retained placenta. That means after the baby is born, mom holds on to that placenta and it doesn't get expelled as it should. So selenium and vitamin E are very important. When you think of selenium and vitamin E, you need to think of them as buddies. They're kind of partners together. They work together. Selenium works in its own way. Vitamin E works in its own way. But when we get selenium and vitamin E together, we get this synergistic effect that helps them both to work in pair with one another and work better. Calcium and phosphorus are probably my second biggest concern when it comes to fetal development and that calcium and phosphorus helps a lot with things like bone growth and bone structure development in that baby. It also helps with mom and helps mom in order to keep her metabolic functions working properly and it keeps her from running into issues with the pregnancy as well. A lot of times in late pregnancy when we get into things like hypocalcemia, which is a loss of calcium in the body, that's because that baby is pulling all of the calcium from mom and putting it into the bone growth and development of that baby. And mom's calcium levels diminish to a point that it actually makes her sick. So calcium and phosphorus are very, very important. Zinc. Zinc is very important. Zinc is very important for cell functions and cell division throughout the body. Cell development. When you think of zinc, that is very important as well. Copper. Copper is important. Even though we think that sheep don't need copper, we've talked about in our prior videos, sheep do in fact need copper. Just if they get too much copper, it can cause problems. Sheep and goats both need copper, especially during pregnancy, because it helps with blood cell and bone marrow formation. Vitamins A, B, and D. All of these vitamins are very important. When you think of vitamin D, that's important because like we talked about with selenium and vitamin E, Vitamin D and calcium are buddies as well, and that vitamin D helps immensely with calcium absorption. Vitamin A, that goes into a lot of development for the baby and helps keep that placenta healthy. Vitamin B is very important. All the different B vitamins are important. This has a lot to do with neurological development in the baby. Magnesium is an often underrated nutrient. This has a lot to do with muscle contraction, muscle development, and it can also lead to premature labor in use and dose if they don't have enough. So how do we get all of these nutrients to mom? The best way to get all these nutrients to mom during her pregnancy is giving her a good free choice mineral that has everything that she needs. Ideally, you want to get a good free choice mineral that is specifically made for your species. You always want to make sure that you're at the peak of what you can get as far as selenium. And you may want to consider getting a mineral that has some additional medications added to help keep that mom happy and healthy. Now, you can purchase this through us at www.lanessafarms.com, or you can just go to your local animal nutritionist and work with them. A lot of the abortive disease processes that you're familiar with, such as chlamydia and vibrio, these 
actually cause problems because they are affecting the placenta. They damage that placenta and the baby actually ends up dying. So let's talk about additional feeds that you need for your animals. Now, if I could give you one tip when it comes to feeding your animals during their pregnancy, it would be we don't want any major changes. We want everything to go nice and smooth. No major swings. We don't want to get to a certain point in the pregnancy where we start pouring grain to them. We don't want to get to a point in the pregnancy where we start feeding them tons and tons more forage, anything like that. It should be a nice, smooth, consistent process. Now, we've already talked about the minerals. The next question I usually get is, do I need to feed my animal grain? And the answer to that is, you don't necessarily need to feed your animal grain, nor would I advise you to do that unless necessary. If if you're giving a good free choice mineral that's specifically made for that mom and you're giving good quality hay, that should be enough. We see issues where people get into the late gestation period where we're in that third trimester, we're in that fetal stage, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, they start seeing the mom getting pregnant and they're starting to notice that mom's getting bigger. And so now all of a sudden they think they need to start pouring hay to them and they need to start pouring grain to them. And this can create a lot of problems. Anytime you do any massive changes in your feeding during pregnancy, you're setting that mom and that fetus both up for some serious problems because these large swings in feed can cause metabolic imbalances in mom and can lead to things like pregnancy toxemia, hypocalcemia, all kinds of problems. So we want to avoid those large swings and changes in our feed. With that being said, I want to talk to you about overweight sheep and goats. We see this a lot online. We see individuals on forums and on Facebook posts, things like that, and they have these big fat ewes, these big fat does, and they're breeding them. If you want to cause problems for yourself, try breeding an overweight you or an overweight doe. My thought process on this is you need to get them in the proper body condition before you breed them. Once they're bred and you're trying to cut weight off of them or add weight to them, you are in big trouble. You want to get them where they need to be before you ever breed them. So why is an overweight you or an overweight doe going to cause you so much trouble? Well, the overweight you or the overweight doe is going to have a lot of problems when it comes to milk production. That heavy body weight, that additional body fat is going to trick the body into putting nutrients in different places than it should. That body wants to maintain homeostasis. It wants to maintain its current body condition. And it's going to take a lot of the nutrients and the proteins, carbohydrates, and things like that that it absorbs. And it's going to put that towards trying to maintain body structure. And it's not going to put it towards milk production. The other thing is, is you can actually get some fat in the udder itself that can decrease milk production. So it's a little counterintuitive. Sometimes people think that, you know, it wouldn't have an effect on milk production, but it most definitely does. The other thing that can happen is if you have a ewe or a doe that's really fat and really overweight, as that baby grows and as that baby starts to develop more, it's going to cause a lot of added pressure on the rumen and it's going to decrease the amount of food intake that that ewe or doe can get. And that that can throw them into ketosis. That would be that pregnancy toxemia. They don't take in enough calories to maintain body uh, structure. And what ends up happening is the body starts breaking down fat to use for energy instead of utilizing the food that is taking in. Last thing that we see a lot with overweight sheep and goats is that we see they have a very, very increased risk for vaginal prolapse and other prolapse issues. They just simply run out of room when it comes to late gestation and you can start seeing a lot of vaginal prolapse, rectal prolapses, things like that. So definitely something that you want to avoid. The last thing I would tell you about overfeeding in late gestation is, is you want to avoid it because you're going to set yourself up for problems with delivery. If you feed a whole lot during late gestation, what can and often does occur is that baby just grows too darn fast. You're going to end up with problems with babies being stuck. They're not going to be able to get through the birth canal if in order to be delivered, or you're going to have that problem some of you have, have found before where there's not enough room in there and you've got twins or you've got triplets and they're all tied up in, in one another like a pretzel. 
And I am here to tell you, if you have ever had to pay for a cesarean section on a sheep or goat, you don't want to do that because you know how expensive that can be plus the damage that it can cause to mom. So again, overfeeding is something that we most definitely want to avoid. I want to also talk to you about timing. Why do we talk so much about timing? Well, timing is important. Some individuals choose to get sheep or goats. They throw them out on pasture with a male and they say, oh, we're just going to let them go and let them let nature run its course. And, and that is not a good idea. And the reason that that's not a good idea is because you're giving up a whole lot of control. There is a lot to be said for timing. Understanding when you're using does get pregnant, controlling when they get pregnant gives you a lot of power and it helps you to take care of them in a much, much better and efficient way. It allows you to flush your using does. It allows you to make sure that you are available when it is that they are going to have their lambs and their kids. And it allows you to ensure that you're giving them the proper nutrition for the proper stage of their pregnancy. So we always tell people, look, we, we understand you want to keep things all natural and, and whatever, but the timing is important. It will give you better results and it will help keep your flock and or herd much healthier and much happier. I'm Tim from Lenosa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and I look forward to seeing all of you again next time.